Hello, we are the Ministry of the Real Truth, and as always, we strive to bring you the real truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in regards to the scriptures. No fluff, no hype, no baloney sausage. Okay, we are from New Zealand. I don't know where that is. Get a map of the world, and we are just above the coldest place on the planet, Antarctica, and across from the most driest place ever, Australia. Okay. We're not actually connected to Australia, right? We're very, very far away from them. Okay, so we were pondering about the Herods, the three Herods of Matthew, Mark, and Luke fame in the Bible. And um, we came across a statement about the Herods. Okay, it was Herod the Tetrarch, Herod son, Herod Antipater or Archelaus, and another one. We can clear that up if we got that wrong. So we're looking at the Biblical Dictionary and Index in concordance of this huge as heavy as King James Version here. Page 96, bottom paragraph. Herod, several individuals in the scriptures are referred to by this family title or surname. This has led to some confusion. 1. Herod the Great lived from 37 to 4 BC, is the first of the New Testament Herods. His father was Antipater, and he was an Edomian. These were Edomites, descendants of Esau, and were proselytes to Judaism. Herod was made king over Palestine, but could not assert his rights until he captured Jerusalem in 37 BC. Herod was cruel and ruthless. His rebuilding of the temple began in 20 BC was largely to placate the Jews. It was he who sought to slay Jesus by slaying all the male children, Matthew 2, 13, 16. Second, Herod Archelaus, the oldest of three sons of Herod the Great, ruled for a while as Ethnarch over half of his father's kingdom. See, Herod was a tetrarch, he was the guy that ruled one quarter of a kingdom or a province. Okay. And his son, Herod Archelaus, the oldest of three sons of Herod the Great, ruled for a while as Ethnarch over half, it probably means that he ruled over half of that province, of his father's kingdom. But after ten years, he, the results, oh, sorry, the revolts were so severe that he was banished to Gaul, Matthew 2, 22. And then there's the third one, Herod Antipas, 4 BC to 39 AD, a wily, cunning king, that fox, Luke 13:32, Tetrarch of Galilee and Perea, Tetrarch meaning that he owned one quarter of that province, and Perea, he married Herodias, wife of his half-brother Philip, one and granddaughter of Herod the Great. He put John the Baptist to death, Mark 6, was later deposed by Caligula and banished to Gaul. So he went there with his son, Herod Archelaus. Okay. Okay, the second not so funny part of St. Matthew 3 18 is in Rama. There was a voice heard, lamentation, and weeping, and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children. Judea or Israel and would not be comforted because they are not because Herod sent his troops out to kill any child two years and under because he was paranoid he had a few people strangled in his lifetime thinking that they were conspiring to overtake his kingdom and he thought this newborn babe who they said was uh, I think they said that he was king of the Jews going to be the king of the Jews he thought because he was paranoid that he would one day grow up and take over his kingdom, dispose him, and take over his kingdom. He didn't like that. Okay, so that's a wee explanation on Herod. We have this big brick here for the timetables of history by Bernard Groom, translated by Werner Stein. Werner Stein? Yeah. Okay. Book. The timetable of history, the new third revised edition, 
world famous reference that tells who did what when from 4500 BC to the present day, now updated for the 1990s. It's quite an old book. A Horizontal Linkage of People and Events by Bernard Grun, based upon Werner Stein's Culture Farfling. I guess they're obviously German. It took about two or three before they actually translated it. Two or three died. Just passed away, naturally, I guess. Uh, and it has something here on Christ, baptism of Jesus Christ, about the year 27. Probable date of crucifixion of Jesus Christ, about 30, the year 30. But what we found here was the calendar had been adapted. Adoption of Julian calendar, 365, 225 days, leap year introduced. It's in year 46, apparently. Probable date of the birth of Jesus Christ at Bethlehem. About 4 BC after adjustment of calendar, which we've just mentioned. Okay, so that explains the Herods. First there was Herod the Great, the Tetrarch, who conquered, had to conquer Jerusalem and placate the Jews. And then there was his son, Herod Archaeus, the oldest of the three sons of Herod the Great. He was ethnic and he had half of his father's kingdom, but he was banished after 10 years because of the revolts. And then his third son here at Antipas, a wily cunning king. That fox, Luke 13.32. We'll have a look at that. Right from the Aramaic New Testament, translated by Victor N. Alexander, a native born Aramaic speaking translator of Bet Narain, Mesopotamia, and Syria. These are supposed to have been the hidden, original, ancient, hidden, and preserved manuscripts from the original Apostolic Orthodox Church of the East. Which is in Urhai. Okay, today it's been revived the Apostolic Church of the East. And it reads Matthew 2 13 16. We've already read that. I'll just get a look at it again. Matthew 2 Herod 1 the Great, Herod the Great. Matthew 2 1, then as Yoshua or Yeshua Mashika or Jesus the Messiah was born in Bethlehem of Judea, right about 4 BC, roughly in the days of King Herod, there came Magi from the east of Jerusalem, and they said, Where is the king of the Jews who was born? Or well, we saw a star in the east and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard of this, he was shaken in all Jerusalem with him. He gathered all the leaders of the high priests and scribes of the people and ask them where they where would the Messiah be born. However they said in the Bethlehem of Judea, for thus the prophet wrote, You too, Bethlehem of Judah, are not the lesser among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will emerge a king who will shepherd my people of Israel. People of Israel. Then Herod secretly called the Magi, and learned from them in which season the star appeared to them, and he sent them to Bethlehem and told them go, and investigate thoroughly about the boy and when you find him, come and show me, so I too may go and worship him. However, as they heard this from the king, they went away, the measure, and behold, that star that they had seen in the east went before them until it came just above where the child was. When they saw the star, they were exceedingly overjoyed, etc., etc. Uh, and it appeared to them in a dream that they should not return to Herod, and they went to the country by another way. Following their departure, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and told them, Rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you, because Herod has prepared to search for the boy to destroy him. Remember, he um, ordered that his troops go to Bethlehem and destroy, kill off any child that was two years and under, by his order. Joseph then rose, took the child and his mother by night, and fled to Egypt and they stayed there until the death of Herod, so that what the Lord had said through the prophet may be fulfilled when he said, From Egypt I call out my son. He's talking about probably about Jeremiah. Then when not Jeremy, then when Herod saw the Magi laughed at him, he became furious and sent for all boys to be killed in Bethlehem and all its districts. 
those from two years and under according to the period designated by the Magi. Then it was fulfilled the thing that was told by the prophet Jeremiah, not Jeremy, who said a voice was heard in Ramtha crying in loud wailing, Rachel weeping for her sons and refusing to be consoled because there were no more. So it doesn't really indicate what season that this child would be born. Okay, if he was two years and under, it could mean, well, he could be any age from a baby to two years old, or he could have been two years old at the time. Okay, so here it goes. Nor is me apparently to slaughter all these children. But if it was truly scriptural, truly a historical event, someone for these people to say this, uh, lady evangelists, theologians, etc., that this happened, they have to have some sort of story and they had a historical record, and you should be able to have a look at it somewhere. We're still looking for that to verify, establish that fact as fact, etc., etc. Okay, Matthew 2.19, however, when Herod died, around 4 BC, according to the historians, and the records, etc., the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in Egypt, and he told him, Rise, take the little boy and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, because those who sought the boy's life are dead. And Joseph rose, took the little boy and his mother, and came to the land of Israel. 22, however, as he heard that Archelaus became king of Judah in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there, to go there. And he saw in a dream that he went to the country of Galilee, and he came and lived in a town called Nazareth, so that what the prophet had, prophets had said came to be fulfilled, that victorious he shall be called. And footnotes underneath. Footnotes for verse 2, 23. In Aramaic, pronounced Nusrat, meaning the victorious or of the town of Nazareth. Yeah, so he would be victorious. Okay, so this third son of Herod, Herod Antipas, a wily, cunning king, that fox, Luke 13.32. Can you look at that? Luke 13.32. In the Aramaic New Testament, translated by Testament translated by Victor N. Alexander from Beit Narin, Syria, who is fluent in the Aramaic dialects and Syriac apparently. Um, 32. On that day, we'll start from 31. On that day, some of the Pharisees came near and said to him, to Yeshua Mashiko or Jesus the Messiah, Go, depart from here, because Herod wants to have you killed. Yoshua, Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, told them, Go tell this fox, go tell that fox, that, behold, watch out, I am casting out, or take that, I am casting out demons, and healings I perform daily and continuously, and on the third day I shall fulfill it. Thus is my duty that on this day and the following I journey, and on the next day to go. For no prophet was found that did anything after Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, killer of prophets and stoner of the apostles that was sent to her. How many times I, Yeshua Mashiach, or Jesus the Messiah, wished to gather your children like a hen that gathers her chicks under her wings, but you did not want it. Take note, look, behold, your house will be left in ruins, for I tell you, you will not see me until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Okay, so that's referring to Herod Antipas. He married, okay, he was a tetrarch of Galilee and Perea. He married Herodias, wife of his half brother. Philip I and granddaughter of Herod the Great. He put John the Baptist to death. Mark VI was later deposed by Caligula and banished to Gaul. He said, Nasty old Caligula knocked him off his perch and sent him, banished him to Gaul as he did with his other brother. 
so that indicates that that's fact that he was referred to by Yeshua Mashiach or Jesus the Messiah as that fox according to Luke 13.32 because he was very sneaky, very sly and he married his half brother's wife, something like that the granddaughter of his father is that right? yeah, the granddaughter of his father a lot of that kind of weird stuff happening in that family then, right? And he finally gets banished by Kaliko. Okay, so hopefully that uh, untangles that confusion. The Christians out there aren't confused anymore. There are three different kind of Herods, right? The Daddy Herod, King Herod, the nasty one who um, ordered his troops to go kill the children, younger children, two and under. And then there's the second one, and then the third one, the little fox, the sly fox, who messed around with his half brother's wife, grand daughter of his grandfather, and the dancing nymph, who worked with her mother and requested because he was stuck. He had his man of his honour, his oaths, right? He was stuck in a corner. She demanded the head of John the Baptist, so he had it brought to her on a platter as she wanted, right? Because that's what her mother wanted. Okay. So there again there were three different Herods. Herod the Great, Herod Antipas and or Antipater and Herod Archelaus, the cheetah. Sly fox. Okay, so this is the Ministry of the Real Truth. If you liked it, give us a couple of these. Add your comments down below. And then go and share it with everybody else that you know Christians, Muslims, atheists, agnostics, your stranger, neighbor, family, and friends. And telling them that we are the Ministry of the Real Truth and we strive to bring you the real truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And we do not bother with hype, fluff, or other baloney.